Hello friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Danny, and today we're gonna to be talking about some bookish pet peeves. So I don't know about you all, but some things in the book world annoy me. And so I decided that I would have a conversation with you guys about it. If you really don't like negative content, please join me in my next video. I promise it will be a lot more positive. <laughs> So throughout this video, I am going to point out some of the more obvious things that I think the book community in general agrees on are annoying, but then I've tried to focus on things that I haven't heard a lot of people talk about, and I just want to know, like, am I the only one that finds this specific thing annoying, um, or are there more of you out there that feel the same way? So one of the things that I've heard a lot of people talk about are the fact that there are some books that have had cover changes mid-series. Uh, and so you have a series that has five books, maybe the first three have the original cover art, and then this, the last two have a completely different cover art, and they never go back and make them consistent. Or they do, but the people who already own the first three have to go and buy three new books if they want a matching set. My pet peeve is similar, so I, I do think that that's annoying. <laughs> Uh, but what I have found, and I've only found one series that does this, but I don't have a, a very large collection of physical books, so I'm sure that this has happened in other series, and that was with the Sun Eater series. So the Sun Eater series, um, book one, The Empire of Silence, was my favorite book of the year last year, and so I did buy the first four books in the series. I believe the series will have seven books in the end six or seven books in the end, and I haven't bought the rest of them yet. But, um, so these come in nice, like floppy uh, paperbacks. And so that was the first book. Second book, same floppy. Third book, still same floppy. Also like the paper quality of each of these books is very nice. They're very smooth. Um, they feel like good quality books. And then no flop. <laughs> this is the fourth book. And it's not floppy at all. And it just makes me sad. So like, you see like the difference? It just makes me sad. And like even the paper quality, it it still feels like, I mean, this is, this is me just complaining, right? Um, like first world issues, but I, the paper quality still feels nice, um, but yeah, it's just not the floppy paperback that I, I've loved, and I don't know why they changed um, the quality of book. So it just made me sad whenever I got them in the mail. I was very excited about them. I put them on the kitchen counter, and you know, I was going through like uh, peeking at the different pages and and how the books looked. <laughs> And I got to the fourth copy and I was like, what is this? I don't understand. I even had my husband come up and I was like, I want you to just go through these four books and tell me if you can find a difference. And he just picked up the fourth book and he was like, yeah, this one's definitely a lower quality. So yeah, that's, that is the main reason that I decided to make this video is because I did not realize, I mean, it makes sense that like that's going to happen sometimes within series. Some books are going to be made with fewer quality items, I guess. Um, but yeah, this one of my, that's the first bookish pet peeve that I have. The next pet peeve is probably a little bit more common. Um, and that is the fact that some books only have, let me get this out so it doesn't make a ton of noise. Um, some books have special editions. So this is the name of the wind, uh, for the first book in the series. Um, so name of the wind is not a, a finished, uh, trilogy. Hopefully it will be one day, um, but it's not yet. But this is the 10th year anniversary edition, I believe, of The Name of the Wind. Um, I'm pretty sure that's what this is. And it's a beautiful edition. It has sprayed edges. It has, it's illustrated. Um, but it's been more than 10 years as the second edition has, or the second book has been written, and they haven't come out with an edition um, for this book. And so I don't know if they will, um, if they're waiting for the third book to come out. And I know, like, this book in general, a lot of people are frustrated because they haven't gotten the third book yet. And I think it's been 12 years since the second book has come out. Um, but I just don't understand, I guess, why publishers make the decision to make special editions. And maybe it's not publishers. I don't know who makes those decisions. But if you make a special edition for one book in a series, why would you not choose to make them all? And maybe instead of doing, I don't know if it would be wise to do like a 10 year in edition. 
10 year anniversary edition for the second book on its 10th year or just to do all of the editions at the same time. I'm not sure, but I mean, they did release the first uh, and they haven't released the second. So yeah, I just, I guess I'm the, per I'm the type of person that if I'm gonna get a special edition, I would like to have a set and not one special edition and the rest kind of regular books. It's actually one of the reasons I don't own the second book in the King, Kill King Killer Chronicles um, because this is the only edition I have of the first. The next two I kind of have paired together um, and that is special editions or hardbacks only being sold at the beginning of publishing, uh, like the first year of a book's existence. Um, or I shouldn't say special editions are only published within the first year because sometimes books do get special editions like the, the 10th year anniversary or whatever. Um, and some books, be when they become popular, they get special editions, but I wish that there were more opportunities to buy the special editions after the book had been out for a while. So that's one of the pet peeves. And then the other is the fact that paper book, paperbacks aren't available at the beginning. You have to get a hardback for a lot of books. This isn't for every book, but um, there are a lot of books that only sell the hardback for a certain amount of time and then they start selling paperbacks. An example of that are the um, the Drowning Empire, The Drowned Empire um, by Andrea Stewart. Currently the Bone Shard War is out, but it's only out in hardback and I want the paperback because both of the other editions that I have are paperback. And I just wish that they would, and I know maybe it's not smart for, you know, the publishers or the sellers to do that because they're going to make more money if they have one item that you can buy versus having three or four different items that you can buy. I'm not sure if that's the reason or not, um, but I just think all of the options should be available. <laughs> um, so what I had said before about like special editions, I think those should be available after, you know, not just during the first print because that means that the only people who are buying that first or that special edition are the people who read new releases like right off the cuff. And there's a lot of people who can't do that. Um, part of the reason for that could be because they can't access them at their library. Maybe they can't afford a brand new uh, hardback cover for every new release that they want to read. Um, and I think that sometimes it would be nice to be able to buy a special edition of a book that you've just dearly loved, but you've read it, you know, a year down the road and no longer the, the special editions are no longer offered and I get it like it's supposed to be like a premium thing but I just think it would be smarter I think the, the companies would make more money had they sold well I guess that's not true the companies would make more money selling the special editions if the book is good so I guess it would put more pressure on the books to have a wider audience um, but yeah I, I just think those two things I think uh, I would appreciate um, those two things happening more often. So special editions, hardbacks um, being sold after, you know, the first initial batch of books and then paperbacks being offered, you know, right off the cuff instead of having to wait for a while. Next is really just more of, uh, I don't know, an aesthetic thing or like a texture thing for me. I don't know why, but I had a book from the library the other day and I'm not gonna be able to remember what it was, but it was a hardback with deckled edges. And I don't mind deckled edges, they don't bother me at all. On a paperback, for, for whatever reason, on a hardback, it made it harder to turn the pages. Um, I think deckled edges in general make it harder to, it's, it's not a good page turning experience, if that makes any sense. You do kind of have to rub your fingers together to get the pages to separate. And having that with a hardback, I just think amplifies that issue. And I discovered I do not like that combination. Um, I, I wish I could remember what book it was because it's not something I see very often. Most of the time, if you get deckled edges, I do think that they are on paperbacks, at least the ones that I've seen. Um, but yeah, don't like deckled edges with hardbacks. <laughs> the next thing I have are the indented front covers. I don't understand them. I think I only have one book that has it and I think it's Paradise. -y. Let's see. Yes, so look at this. This is the front cover. There's space here. Like, why? Why does the front cover not cover the entire thing? I don't understand why that's a thing. And this is this not like not an uncommon thing. I just don't I don't get it. And most of the time they do have like I don't even know if you guys can see that, but there's like a quote atop across the top of the yellow that you can see without having the cover there. Um, and I've seen them like that have cutouts, but like I don't know. I just don't get it. I would rather have a full cover. <laughs> 
but maybe that's just me. Another thing with the kind of quality of printing or quality of I don't I want to say quality of books, but like the quality of the materials the books are made out of. I really don't enjoy when books are super heavy. And I don't know, um, I would think that heavier materials would be more expensive, but maybe that's not true. I know the, the one book that comes to my mind uh, when I think of this is the book Becoming by Michelle Obama. Um, I had t brought home like five or six library books that day that I had checked that out from the library. And that book, <laughs> which it, it's not a short book, but it's not a long book either. That book was heavier than like a 500 page fantasy book just because of the materials that it was made out of. And I just, it doesn't make for a comfortable physical reading experience when you're holding something so heavy. Yeah, I don't, I don't understand why you would make your book heavier. And obviously like I'm not blaming the author or like that, that doesn't, I'm sure the author has no bearing on what that has uh, at all. But I just find that fascinating that those decisions were made and that book was so much heavier than another book. And I know like certain types of paper are going to do that, but it wasn't in an illustrated edition. I think maybe it had pictures in the very center of the book. Um, I actually didn't get through all of that book, um, but it, it wasn't completely illustrated. And even some of my illustrated editions are lighter than that book. So I don't, I don't, I just don't understand. Um, doesn't make for a comfortable reading experience. I would prefer a lighter book. <laughs> Next, and I think this is on the, along the lines of one of the more common ones is having series numbers on the spine of the book or on the front of the book. Um, so I think, yeah, these are a good example. So this is the Drown Empire and you can see at the top it has one and two. And so you know that it's part of a series. You know that this is book one and this is book two. And I really don't care if they wanted to do it on the front cover instead of doing it on the spine. As long as it's somewhere on the cover, uh, I'm perfectly fine with that. I have picked up so many books though at the library that I think sound amazing and I take them home and realize that they're like fourth in a series. And I'm like, well, I guess I can't read that book or if I do I'm probably spoiling myself for the storyline ahead of that. Um, so I just wish that they would make it a little bit easier uh, for people browsing books that maybe have never heard of that book to figure out that it's actually part of a series. Next is another one that is also probably a very common um, irritation amongst readers and that is the synopsis on the back of the book or on the front cover of the book spoiling parts of the story. I don't know how many books, it's really bad in thrillers, um, I don't know how many books I've read that I've read the synopsis on and then as I'm reading I'm like well that still hasn't happened yet and so I know that event's gonna happen and it's like at the 80% mark. I just think that you should be able to sum up your storyline in a paragraph and not give away plot points that are 450 pages into your book. Like, I mean, that's that's an absurd number for a thriller, but like 200 pages into your book. Like you, you should be able to give me enough to help me have interest <laughs> in the storyline without giving away like big plot points. The next one I haven't heard very many people talk about um, and I am just frustrated by this because it's caused me to buy uh, books that I ended up having to return. So on Amazon, and I'm sure that there are other um, booksellers that sell books this way as well, I was looking for editions of um, the Stormlight Archive and there was a, a book box that was I think it was like $21 and it had all three of, well, the original three books in the Stormlight Archive. And at first I was like, well, that's super cheap for books. And so I was a little questioning on whether or not um, it was actually going to be all three books or if it was just going to be one and the picture was all three. And so I had my suspicions, but I went ahead and ordered it and I didn't, I was in a hurry. I didn't read the reviews and I got it. And all three of these books, let me show you you've never seen one of the Stormlight Archive books. So these books are each like, they have a wonderful flop to them, I love them. Um, all of these books are a thousand pages or above and they're pretty large. <laughs> when I got the box <laughs> from Amazon, they put it in my mailbox. So they said it had gotten delivered and I hadn't received like a box on my porch or anything. So I was like, uh, okay, I think maybe somebody either stole my stuff or it didn't get delivered or what. 
and I realized that they had put it in my mailbox and I was like, there's no way that three of these books are fitting in my mailbox. And so I got them out and they were these tiny editions. I mean, I, I don't, you can't call them pocket editions, but because they wouldn't fit in your pocket. But I mean, I don't know, I want to say like a three by three or maybe a four, maybe four by three at the very max. They were so tiny. And I'm like, how do you fit a thousand pages? So I didn't open it. I ended up sending it back because I was like, that's definitely not what I wanted because I love the Stormlight Archive. I wanted the big floppy editions. And uh, I went in and I read the reviews and it was completely like the dimensions were listed on there. But I think that when they advertise things like that, if it's something that you're buying online, they should say mini. <laughs> I mean, I know it's stupid. I should just look at the dimensions, but I I don't know. Because when I went to the, the reviews, there were definitely some people that were confused by it and they were like, these are mini. But then some people had like even opened them and they said that the like the binding on the books was uh, so bad that some of the papers or pages were falling out. Um, the text was so small that you had to have like a magnifying glass, which that's obviously probably an exaggeration, but depending on what, you know, how, how well your vision is, that could be true. Um, so I, I guess I don't understand why they exist. I mean, other than the fact that I guess they're cheaper, um, cause you could get all three books for $21. And I think each of these cost me like, I don't know, it was probably less than 20. This says $21.99. And I'm not sure if that's what I paid for it or not. I've had this for a long time, but, um, so I understand that they're cheaper, but if they're not, if they're books that you can't read because either the binding isn't proper, like pages fall out, or if the, the, the text is so small that you're having a hard, I don't, I guess I just don't understand. I feel like there are like mass market paperback books that are going to be cheaper as well. I don't know if they would be that cheap, but I don't know. <laughs> I, I guess I, I, I'm just more irritated at the fact that I thought it was like a full box set that was just on sale and it ended up being a tiny miniature version. And that's totally on me. I totally should have checked the dimensions. I just didn't realize things like that existed. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> if you guys have seen like many, many books like that, let me know what your thoughts are. Do you like them? Uh, do you think, you know, do you think the same thing I do? Like why do these things exist? Or yeah, let me know what your thoughts are on that one. The last two are probably the most obvious uh, and the ones that I think I've heard a lot of people complain about, and that is permanent stickers on covers and the spines of the books not matching. Um, so permanent stickers have become uh, a really big thing. Um, people advertising like different book clubs, like I think the Oprah Book Club has a sticker, the Reese Book Club has a sticker, um, but there's also books now or stickers now like on TikTok, like seen on TikTok. Um, there's stickers on... Uh, the different awards that they've won, which those I kind of don't mind, but I, I wish that they would all be temporary. That way, if you want them on there, you can leave them. And if not, you can peel them off and you still have like the beautiful cover. Cause sometimes it's just sad whenever you have this really beautiful cover and then you have this big nasty sticker on it. <laughs> it makes me mad. Um, and then the spine's not matching. This one bothers me less than I know it bothers others. Um, but it, I do think the, um, I'm not going to get them down again, but the uh, spines for the um, Sun Eater series that I got, those spines don't all match. Some of them have like a trim all the way around. Um, well, I'll get them down so you guys can see. I didn't get all of them. <laughs> I didn't get all of them down, um, but I wanted to just show you, show you guys an example. So here is the spine of one and then the spine of the other. And so when they're together, you know, same, similar color schemes. And I do like the fact that like the titles are in the same location, the, the author's name, they're in the same location, but um, it's just kind of odd that some of the design um, on the spines are different. So, and like you even have the fourth edition, the little square is a different size. Um, it doesn't annoy me as much as some of the other things that I've listed on this list, but uh, it is kind of odd. You would think that if you're selling something that will eventually be a set, you would want them to match. So anyway, <laughs> that's a list of my bookish pet peeves. Uh, please keep in mind that this is supposed to be a lighthearted video. I totally understand that there are probably reasons that these things exist uh, and happen the way that they do that I am not aware of. <laughs> 
but it doesn't mean that I don't want to gripe about it every once in a while. So this is really just for me to kind of vent uh, and hopefully help you guys vent as well. Let me know in the comments what some of your pet peeves are. If uh, you agree with me on the ones that I have or if you disagree, I would love to chat with you guys in the comments. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you have a lovely evening and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.